So you want to talk about sunscreen. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, you you want to talk, talk about Hello friends, welcome back. My name's Ramon, how are you today? Time and time again on this channel, you always see me talk about sunscreen filters, specifically the ones approved in the US versus the ones approved overseas in Asia and Europe and how there is a big difference, I will be very honest. And so today we're gonna to be talking about what that difference is and kind of like why. Before we get into today's video, I'm gonna ask, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so that you know when I post other sunscreen related videos, which is kind of all I post right now on my channel. And then comment down below your thoughts on some of these sunscreen filters or like what your favorite filters are that you look for specifically in sunscreens. I know a lot of people are very partial to certain kinds of filters and I understand why, but let's talk about it down below. So when you buy a sunscreen, normally, and you look on the back of it, you can see on the top right here, there's a little area that's specifically for active ingredients. And those are the active UV filter ingredients that are doing the work for the sunscreen, right? And so there's two categories of sunscreen filters and those are mineral slash physical slash inorganic and then chemical slash organic and basically it's kind of based upon the type of compound or molecule that's doing the work in protecting from uv right but here's the thing just because of like all the legislation put in place and whatnot the fda who approves all the sunscreen filters we do in the u.s and mind you this is only just because sunscreens are treated as a drug as opposed to just a cosmetic product the fda is the one responsible for approving the stuff and basically the fda hasn't approved any really new sunscreen filters in a very 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 long time and as a result that reflects in the quality the efficacy the overall functionality of the uv filters that we have in place in the u.s on screen i'm going to flash a list of all the filters that we have currently in place in the u.s i believe it's about 16 and i'm gonna read a little sound sound about the fda u.s consumers don't have access to eight advanced european filters because the fda which is the food and drug administration is not convinced that they are safe for users which Chemical and cosmetic industry con executives counter that people are being denied potentially life-saving protection. T. Despite legal efforts to break the stalemate, the wrangling could go on for many, many years. Legislation just got passed recently, I believe in 2018. That being said, the prospect of new filters being introduced and passed into the US system could still take a little while. Most sunscreen filters protect users against UVB rays, which don't penetrate as deep, and those are the rays responsible mainly for burns, UVB burns. Some also protect against UVA rays, and those are the ones that penetrate a lot deeper, and those can cause a lot more risk, specifically those that are like melanoma related to like skin cancer. So again, the FDA's list contains 16 approved filters, just eight of which are regularly used, and we'll get into that a little bit more when I talk about the filters, but that tells you out of the 16, eight are already outdated. And out of the 16, only two are approved for UVA protection. This list includes oxybenzone, avobenzone, octanoxate, octosalate, homosalate, octocrylene, zinc oxide, and titanium dioxide. And out of those, the UVA filters that are approved are avobenzone and zinc oxide. Basically out of those eight, again, those are eight of 16, the other eight that aren't used anymore basically aren't used because they are like very, very proven to cause a lot of irritation, be really, really sensitizing to skin. They make sunscreens really unpleasant or they're just no longer made, they're that outdated. And for example, one of the unused ones, deoxybenzone, turns skin blue upon UV exposure, which, what? And so for comparison, the European Union has 27 filters approved that they use regularly in sunscreens in the EU. The ones that are approved in the EU also have to go through an even more strenuous and rigorous testing system than the US does for their sunscreen filters, to be approved for usage. So the US saying that the ones that are approved in Europe aren't safe for use kind of just, it boggles my mind, you know? Getting into sunscreen filters, as I mentioned, there's two types, physical, AKA mineral, AKA inorganic, and then chemical, AKA organic. And so physical, these are mineral oxides, that's the way they're called minerals, and they do not contain carbon, which is why they're called inorganic. So one potential pro for them is that people consider them to be a lot more beneficial for sensitive skin compared to chemical sunscreens, which isn't necessarily always true. For example, I have some sensitivity to zinc oxide sometimes. In order for them to work effectively, they have to be in sunscreens at such high concentrations that oftentimes the formulation of these becomes really inelegant. They're really goopy, they're thick, and they have that really characteristic white cast, which is due to results that a big misconception with mineral filters is that they reflect light that hits them, which is partially true. Again, I only said 5% of that light is reflected back. So realize the other 95% of it is actually converted back into heat when it comes into contact with the filters. So much like chemical filters, which everyone always demonizes compared to physical filters, physical filters also have to convert UV light back into heat, so keep that in mind. So then you have chemical, which is also called organic filters, and these do have carbon in their compound makeup. Being called organic has nothing to do with like the USDA, like 
organic in terms of like how it comes to be. And note, they're just called chemical to really separate them from the physical and mineral sunscreens. Understand all the filters that we use for sunscreens, mineral or otherwise are chemicals regardless, everything's a chemical. But compared to physical filters, chemical filters convert all the UV light that hits them back into heat. But again, everything in your skincare, all types of actives, all the ingredients are all chemicals. It's just a naming distinction. So when you're shopping for sunscreens, what you really wanna look for is the phrase broad spectrum protection, which tells you that it protects from the UVB all the way through UVA spectrum of UV light. High SPF value, that SPF is the factor that protects you from UVB or the burning rays. And then sometimes you're gonna see PA or PPD ratings, which is the UVA protection, and you want higher values of that. That being said, UVB rays, while a good amount of them can still make it through clouds, UVB rays don't penetrate glass. UVA, on the other hand, which are the longer wavelengths, those penetrate through glass. So even if you're inside, you're gonna get hit with UVA rays. And that's why it's important to wear sunscreen every day, no matter if you're indoors or outdoors. They can penetrate skin cells much deeper in your dermis. And as a result of that, they lead to melanoma related skin cancers, as well as causing cell damage much deeper in your skin layers. UVA is aging. It breaks down the collagen and elastin that's in your skin. That's what causes like fine lines and wrinkles. That's what you wanna look for. Broad spectrum and ideally also some sort of UVA protection reading as well. So discussing what the sunscreen filters are in themselves, let's start with the inorganic filters, and those are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Basically, zinc oxide in itself, actually a really efficient UV filter in that it protects from all of UVB rays, as well as a good majority of UVA rays as well. These physical filters are very photostable. The thing with these is lots of times in order to get really, really good high protection formulations, you need a really high percentage of these. And as a result, the formulation, that's when it gets really like thick, goopy, really occlusive, kind of greasy. With these, just make sure you're getting the broad spectrum protection. A lot of times, you're going to be seeing the titanium dioxide as a way to fortify the UVA protection that the zinc oxide offers. Mind you, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, they're both white pigments. That's where you get that really signature white cast. Some sunscreens will try to micronize those filters so that they're a lot less opaque and a lot less white casty, but then that starts to worry people because people feel like that gets into the bloodstream and affects things, which I mean, We'll get to that. And one thing with these physical filters is that they are suspensions. They don't necessarily dissolve into their like vehicle. Therefore, sometimes you might need to shake them, but that's why you also have a really thick opacity to sunscreens because those sunscreen filters are just suspended in that formula. So now let's get into the topic of chemical filters allowed in the US. Avobenzone, octocrylene, oxybenzone, homosalate, octosalate, octanoxate, those six. Out of those six, avobenzone is the only UVA filter approved in the US and it covers the broad spectrum of UVA rays. That being said, highly photo unstable and basically it's only able to be really effective when paired with octocrylene, which is approved in the US thankfully. But that being said, it's not the most effective. It's really photo unstable and it degrades over a couple hours in UV light. That's why we really stress with US filters to really reapply in order to get really effective UVA coverage. Everything else I mentioned is UVB filters. And with that, you have homosalate and octosalate, which degrade in light. And also homosalate is not the most effective UVB filter in itself. That's why you need to see a really high percentage of it in sunscreens, generally above 10% for it to be effective UVB protection. You have octocrylene, which is generally photostable, again, utilized to fortify avobenzone. That being said, there are studies that found that octocrylene can increase the skin's photosensitivity to sun and thus increase free radical damage. Then you got octibenzone. Octibenzone is that one ingredient where you're kind of like, uh, it is photostable, but the cons behind it outweigh the pros. It's found that through UV exposure, it actually increases uh, its photocarcinogenic properties, which means that it basically negatively affects the skin's DNAs and can lead to cancer-related risks. And as Renee from Gotham Mesa writes, it's basically a really disliked sunscreen filter, but because of all the other really crappy ones we've approved in the US, oxybenzone is kind of the one that's really utilized to really carry the weight for UVB protection in sunscreens. Then you have octanoxate, which degrades over time when exposed to UV light. And it actually can be stabilized with another ingredient called tinosorbem, but we don't approve that ingredient in the US. So, mm. and then octanoxate and oxybenzone are two ingredients that are not reef safe. And if you watch Hiram's channel, Hiram is very adamant and very passionate about UV filters that are really reef unsafe. That being said, I have opinions on that, but that's a whole different video. But just know if you're trying to avoid sunscreens that are not reef safe, oxybenzone, octanoxate. You might see helioplex a lot, and this is actually the patent that's owned by Neutrogena. And helioplex is a combination of avobenzone and oxybenzone, which remember what I said about both of those ingredients, but those are kind of like the powerhouse combo that's used in a lot of Neutrogena sunscreens as the Helioplex name. And then the only other technically chemical filter that's approved in the US is Mixerol SX, which is patented by L'Oreal. This is technically one of the more advanced UVA filters, but it's only approved in one sunscreen, which is the Anthelios something or other, I'll put it on screen. So let's get into the internationally approved chemical filters. And this is where we get really spicy with things. As you notice, there's only one UVA filter that's approved in the US, avobenzone, really photo unstable, and it does technically 
basically cover a good majority of the UVA spectrum, but not a lot of it. Basically what international filters have done is expanded that UVA coverage, increased efficacy as well as photo stability, as well as minimizing the degradation ability of these sunscreens when exposed to UV light. So they are basically like five stars all across the board when it comes to protecting against UVA light and being really, really effective and long wearing. You have Tinosorb S and M, which when combined together, give you the most broad spectrum protection, pretty much possible for the most part. In itself, Tinosorb S, much like zinc oxide, is a very broad spectrum protecting sunscreen filter. Oftentimes it's used to stabilize a lot of other filters. And the you have Tinosorb M, which is a very, very interesting, unique concept in that it is a chemical filter, but it actually has some properties of physical sunscreens in that while it absorbs the majority of UV light and converts it back to heat, it also reflects a small percentage back as well. But it technically is a chemical compound filter due to the fact that it has carbon in its structure. You have Mixoral XL, which is the cousin to Mixoral SX that I mentioned above earlier with US approved filters. Now, again, patented by L'Oreal. It in itself covers a lot of UVB and a lot of UVA rays, but it does need a little bit of a boost. But in itself, it's still really photo stable. Paired with the right ingredient to cover the majority of the remaining UVA rays, it's a good filter. You have Evenol A+, which is a really stable sunscreen filter. It offers free radical protection, which is part of its being. And it also has really, really, really good broad strength UVA protection because you're able to use this sunscreen filter in really high percentages in sunscreen formulations. And then Evenol T150, which is kind of Evenol A's cousin. It's efficient, photo stable UVB protection, and it's used a lot in waterproof sunscreen formulations because it's water resistant and it's really long wearing. And then you have Instilazole. It's a sunscreen filter used in a lot of really lightweight sunscreen formulations that offers really great UVB and pretty good UVA protection. It won't degrade in UV light, but it can degrade in water. It's really good in really lightweight sunscreen formulations, but it's not really great in terms of being like water resistant, waterproof, long wear in that regards. So you see the difference between US approved chemical filters and international approved chemical filters. And basically what it comes down to is there's a lot higher, a lot broader, a lot more effective, less photodegradable, more photo stable UVA filters that we have internationally compared to the one UVA filter we have in the US that's not the greatest and a lot of UVB filters which aren't the greatest. A lot of the UVB filters we have in the US cause a lot of irritation in the skin, cause a lot of photosensitivity in the skin, and they're really irritating formulations. The international ones don't do that as much. And that's why I'm really, really passionate about using non-US approved chemical filters. They just do a lot more for the skin. They're a lot better powerhouse photostable ingredients that benefit you and they have a lot more better formulations than we have approved in the US. And then for reference, going back to US approved chemical filters that are no longer approved in the US that we don't use anymore, you have two that I want to talk about. I'm going to call out just because when I saw these in the research, I was like, what the fuck? One of them is called Padamate O. It's water insoluble PAPA derivative, which PAPA, a lot of times we don't like in skincare formulations. And Padamate O in itself is controversial because after absorbing UVB rays, which again, it's a sunscreen filter, the active may produce indirect DNA damage. And then the other UV filter that we're talking about is aminobenzoic acid, which is a UVB filter as well. It's one of the first active ingredients that we use in sunscreens when we are developing sunscreens. It causes allergies in the skin, but it also causes discoloration in clothes and it also increases risk of cellular UV damage. And it's not used in sunscreens anymore as a result of that. And it's so bad that it's banned in Europe, but we still have it approved in the US. So when it comes to sunscreen, basically what it comes down to is find the right filters. In the US, we're kind of a little bit screwed, but if you're buying online and looking for international sunscreens, look at what filters are involved in the formulations, look at the active ingredients, but also look at the other ingredients that are paired with these sunscreens. What's really cool about some sunscreens is they really pair a lot of antioxidants, a lot of extracts to really aid the skin, whether it's antioxidants to just benefit the skin, period, or it's antioxidants to soothe the skin due to the fact that you could be experiencing UV damage to your skin. Those are ingredients that are going to help soothe and nourish your skin after UV damage. And I'm talking ingredients like vitamin C, vitamin E, green tea. Also, something I talk about a lot is alcohols and sunscreens. Alcohol and sunscreen is not a bad thing. A lot of times they're used in formulations just to act as solvents for the chemical sunscreen filters, make the ingredient formulation really lightweight and just make the sunscreen texture in itself a lot more elegant. So just know that as long as it's paired with other ingredients in the sunscreen filters that are going to moisturize and hydrate your skin, alcohol is not a bad ingredient to have in your sunscreens especially if you have oily skin. Also, sunscreens are great moisturizers. So if you're worried about layering too many things or being too heavy, cut out moisturizer, go on with a really generous layer of sunscreen, you should be good. And on that fact, just know that when you're wearing sunscreen, a quarter teaspoon is what you need in order to get the UVA and UV protection on the packaging. There's a lot of rigorous testing that sunscreens need to go to in order to get this rating. And in order to get that number when you're wearing your sunscreen, you need to wear a quarter teaspoon on your face, your ears, and your neck non-negotiable. If you're wearing any less, you're not getting this number and you're basically wasting your money. On top of that, in order to ensure proper UV protection all throughout the day, and this goes for every filter, no matter what, you need to reapply your sunscreen every about two to three hours, just because from your oil coming through and breaking up the sunscreen or rubbing your face or whatever you're doing, you are in effect degrading the sunscreen's wear on your skin. Therefore reapplying just reinforces that UV protection throughout the day. So just reapply. I have a whole video on reapplication. Check it out. It'll make your life a lot easier. 
And with that, yeah, that's the tea on UV filters, US and non-US approved, and why it's so important, period, slash to me in general, and why I talk about it so much on my channel. Hopefully that clarified some things to you. Hopefully, if you have any questions, you'll reach out to me. Hit that subscribe button if you found this video useful. Hit that thumbs up if you found this video useful. And then down below, do you have any questions? Let me know. Let's chit chat it up. Slash, what are some of your favorite UV filters that you look for? For me, personally, it's any of the Tinus orbs and any of the Uvenols. I don't touch mineral filters, even though that's literally all the videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a great day. Bye.